Okay, awesome. Well, welcome, guys. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Uh, this is Take Back the Day with WPCLI. I know it's Sunday, day two of a word camp. Um, so I've kept this kind of light. There's not a ton of like heavy code concepts or anything to wrap your head around. Um, so do not fear about that. We're going to keep it uh, kind of light for the second day here um, and try and make it a little fun. A little bit about myself, uh, my name is Ryan Kanner. I've been developing on WordPress for eight or nine years now, uh, since around the time custom post types were invented. Um, so kind of been working with it for quite a while now. I'm an ex-East Coaster, born and raised in New York, uh, lived in Providence, Rhode Island for quite a while, and now I live in Denver, Colorado. I work for a company called Digital First Media. We work on newspapers day in, day out. Um, I build websites for newspapers such as the Denver Post, the Orange County Register, and Mercury News. Um, so really, really big WordPress sites, uh, hosted on WordPress VIP, um, all that fun stuff is, is my day to day. I'm, an also, I'm also an organizer of the WordPress Denver Meetup and the WordCamp for Publishers, which is happening in August. So if you're interested in that, come on out. So just wondering, how many of you in this room have heard of WPCLI before seeing my talk? Okay, cool. How many of you use it on a semi-regular basis? Okay, pretty much what I was expecting. So just to go over it on a high level, WPCLI is WordPress on the command line. So most of the things that you can do through the UI and in your admin, you can actually do on the command line. It's an open source project, which is now backed by the WordPress.org, um, and it's collaborated on in GitHub. It allows you to talk to WordPress without going through the browser, which has a lot, a lot of upsides, which we can go through later. Um, it also has an easy API to use for extending it, writing your own commands, and things like that. It's available from WPCLI.org, so if you're interested to learn more about it, you can go there and find much more information than I can talk to you about for 40 minutes. Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about my journey to enlightenment with WPCLI. I started using it about a year or two ago when I was working in the agency space. Um, I was the WordPress guy. Um, a lot of you are probably kind of familiar with this. You may be the WordPress guy or gal at uh, an agency that you're working at where you're like the only person touching WordPress sites on a day in and day out basis. While I was there, I was managing about 100 WordPress installs at any given time. Uh, so this created a lot of issues for me being one person, managing 100 sites and then launching one or two new ones a month. So things were starting to get a little difficult. So I turned to WPCLI to automate some things and, and make my life a little bit easier. Flip the pages forward a little bit, and I'm working at a large media company. We have a smaller amount of sites, but things started quickly growing out of control. Uh, the way our workflow works is we have about four or five instances for each site that we host. So now we're up to 10 sites, so that's 50 installs that we're now managing. This quickly became very, very difficult for us to manage, and I started looking again towards WPCLI to help us automate and manage all of these websites. The day that everything changed was when Daniel Bockhuber posted this tweet that says, love me some WPCLI. And when I was looking at it, I looked at the command that he was running, WP at all core update. And it went through every single one of his sites and updated, updated them immediately. This is a process that would take me all day to do on 50 installs. And he was sitting there laughing at people like me while he did it from his command line in one second. From that day, I decided that I was going to dig deeper into WPCLI and figure out how I can make it work for me. I'm doing this talk a little bit different today. You can go online and find out tons of information about technical details about WPCLI, what you can do it, how to write your own commands and things like that. But I want to show you what you can actually do with it. Actually do with it today with minimal amount of effort to save you a boatload of time. So let's look at a scenario. This is something that happened to me a lot at my old job. Get an email from my boss. Subject, 911, disable Todd's login. 
Hi Ryan, Todd from marketing left the company today and he's after all of our clients. Can we please disable his login for all of our sites? First of all, don't be a Todd. Please don't be a Todd. Everyone knows a Todd and not cool, man. Not cool. There's one problem with this. Todd had access to all 100 of our sites. That's a lot of sites to go through and disable this, this guy's login for. Without WPCLI, we're going into each site, logging in, and then doing this over and over and over again until this is a totally unmanageable thing to do. Something like this would take me all day to do without WPCLI. Logging into 100 sites and disabling his user. But how can we use WPCLI to automate this? We can run something like this, WP at all, user delete, Todd, and then reassign it to another user so his posts don't go away. This is going to loop through all my sites and get rid of Todd and assign it to a different user I've, I've decided to assign it to. This is way easier than logging into a hundred separate WordPress installs. And it kind of seems like magic, right? It's not. It's super easy to do. So the secret sauce behind this is environment aliases in WPCLI, which I think is the most unheralded feature of WPCLI that you're not going to see everyone talking about on the internet. A lot of times you see people talking about managing a single install and nice commands you can run to do things, but when you throw these environment aliases in, into, the, into the mix, you can really start seeing the power of WPCLI. So that WP user delete command that I ran is just a normal command that comes out of the box with WPCLI. So I'm also creating these environment aliases. So this is, just lives in a WP-CLI.YAML file. WPCLI parses these YAML configuration files to find out where all of your sites are. So normally you can use this if you're just CD'd into the directory of where your WordPress install lives, but you can also define a path, an SSH user, um, and other details about the site. So it can actually reach out and do remote WPCLI commands on other servers. So that's how I ran that command that we just saw. The, the at all alias encompasses all of the aliases that are in your WPCLI YAML file. So it'll run the command across everything that you have defined in there. So usually I spend a decent amount of time setting up these YAML files, depending on the amount of sites you have, but if you just sit down, take 15, 20 minutes, look up all of your SSH users and all of those credentials, you can define those out, and then any time you need to run a command across your entire network, you can do that very easily. Let's look at another scenario. I get an email from my PM that says, Environment creation. Hi Ryan, we we're ready to get started with development for whatever company. Could you get all of the environments created for them? You might be thinking, totally cool, WordPress has a five minute install. I can do this no problem. But hold on, is it really that easy? Because when you're thinking about setting up WordPress installs on multiple environments, there's other things that you need to take into consideration that the quick five minute install doesn't talk about. So we all know the normal install, download WordPress, unzip it, create a database, or remember the credentials to that database, set up your WP config file, go through the site set up in the browser, and then my personal favorite, add your email as the admin account on that install, so then you get an email anytime anyone leaves a comment on that blog or anything like that until the end of time. Once you're done setting up a local environment, then you move on to staging and production, where you need to find all of your SSH or FTP credentials for, which you may or may not have forgotten in that time, and then have to go through a password reset. Um, and then you need to go into these two boxes and repeat everything two times without messing anything up once. Super realistic, right? So by the time you're done with this, you might want to look for a new job on, jobs, jo on your favorite job boards because you're thinking, this really, really sucks. Luckily, with WPCLI, we can automate some of this very easily. So this is a script I wrote called WP-install and then I'm just passing it the name of the database I want it to use and the URL for the site. And then it's gonna run through the basic steps for 
doing a WordPress installation, installing WordPress, creating a config fi file, adding a user to it so you can log in. So now we've changed this five minute install into a five second install. And when you have to do this across multiple environments, this saves a ton of time. So let's look at the secret sauce with this. This is a simple bash script and all I'm doing is wrapping the existing uh, WPCLI commands that we have available to us. So the first thing it does, downloads core, then creates a config file, and then passes the database name that I wanted to use. Creates the database, installs WordPress, creates a user, and then sets an administrator role for, for that user. And because I'm really lazy, I can just open up the admin straight from here. So you might have noticed that a couple things were missing from the command that you normally have to do in a WordPress install. So you usually have to know the username and password for your database, where the host is, um, and then you need to pass it an admin email and an admin user to create. So within the wpcli.yaml configuration file, you can also set defaults for all of your commands. So for a lot of instances, our database password and user is not changing. Right. On our local installs, we have a database, it has a, da it has a user and a password, but we're not going in and changing those things all the time. So instead of having to look that up every time and remembering, does it have a password? Does it not have a password? Is it root? Is it test123? Or all of those fun passwords you use on local instances? We can just define it in our wpcli.yaml file and never have to worry about it ever, ever, ever again. So with these two things, we can automate the setup and install of WordPress and save some time. Let's look at another scenario. The thing that WPCLI is also really great at is touching parts of WordPress that don't have a UI, that are important to WordPress, but not necessarily super important to an everyday user. So this is a scenario getting an email from a client. Let's say I built an integration with one of their third-party systems and I'm sending a bunch of data over to it in a cron job. So they might say, hi Ryan, we haven't gotten any new invoices into our system in the last two hours. Can you check to see if the cron job is stuck again? Crons suck in WordPress. This is a fact, right? If you're writing a lot of crons, you're gonna have to look into some sort of system or whatever, not the point. So Debugging cron is inherently very difficult to do in WordPress. And this is an artist representation of the cron being stuck. <laughs> and also a really cute dog, because let's keep it light. So without WPCLI, you might do something like this. Go into your favorite GUI for your database, and then look and see what's in the cron option, and then see it's like a gigantic encoded thing that you have no idea what's going on inside of. So this is like not super helpful and really time consuming to go through all of this to understand which one of your cron jobs are scheduled, which one have run, haven't run, when they're scheduled to run. But with WPCLI, this is really easy. There's a command, WP cron event list, which will list all of your cron events for you, tell you when they last ran, when they're running, running next, and the frequency in which they run. You can also force run a command from the command line with something like WP cron event run and then the name of the event. So while you're debugging an issue to find out why that cron isn't firing, to make that customer happy, happy you can force run it from the command line. Um, and then you can spend the next hour or so actually debugging the issue. So this is just one example of a UI list feature that you can manage with WPCLI. There are many others. One of my favorite, WP Media Regenerate, right? If you're writing a custom theme and you have custom image sizes, normally you add a new one, download the Ajax Thumbnail Rebuild plugin, rebuild all of your thumbnails, wait for that to finish, delete it, and then do it over and over and over again. With WPCLI, you can just run WP Media Regenerate, go get a coffee, wait for it to finish. Um, much, much easier. You can also do things like manage transients. Uh, you can delete all of the expired ones or just all of them in general. Um, again, managing cron. Uh, the rewrite flush is also a good one. Instead of going to permalinks and hitting save, 
you can just run WP rewrite flush and your rewrite rules are now flushed. That's all you have to do. Um, one of my other favorite ones is WP cache flush. Uh, if you're using an object cache, especially across a bunch of different sites, and you push out a new feature that requires the cache to get flushed, if you're using environment aliases, you can run something like WP at all cache flush, and then you don't have to worry about anything. Let's look at another scenario. WordPress update day. Such a glorious day. The features that you've been hearing about at WordCamps for years and years are finally coming to you. But then you realize you need to log into every one of those sites and click update individually. Not fun. There's also other things that happen in the WordPress world, right? Sometimes there are vulnerabilities, right? And plugins, even popular ones that you may be running on all of your sites. But, I mean, this never happens, right? <laughs> never happens. We have great developers in our community, but stuff happens. Security vulnerabilities come into code especially when your head's down in that code for a long period of time, you cannot realize that your plugin or whatever you're working on has a security vulnerability. So these things happen, and as site owners, this is something we need to deal with. <laughs> and this can make you feel like this, right? That the world is burning, but there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, this may have a security vulnerability in it, but I'm gonna take all day and have to log into all these sites and deal with this now. Right, and we're back at logging into sites individually, which after you get into WPCLI and start automating things, this feels like such an arcane thing to do. With WPCLI, this is super easy. Again, by using environment aliases, we can control multiple sites from one place. So we can run w, WP at all core update. And this, is, this was my pinnacle moment, finally doing this, after seeing that tweet that I saw so long ago and wondering how this magical thing was happening. I had finally done it. I had turned update day into the most simple day of my life. It was so easy. I told my project managers, yeah, I'll do that today. It'll take me all day. And this is what I was doing. <laughs> Another thing you can do with this, if you're scared of updating things all at once, you can actually just find out how big the problem is. If you know that Jetpack 4.2 has a security vulnerability, just do a plug and get on it and then look through all of the records that come back to see which one is running Jetpack 4.2. And you can see, oh, Site 7 has 4.2. This is a very small issue. One site has it, we don't have to freak out or worry about doing a massive update. We can just update that one plugin and be done with this. This is one of my favorites, and something that took a really long time to figure out. This was something that WPCLI is actually really, really good at. Importing lots of content. So I would get emails from clients and stuff saying, you know, we want to import this massive tag list, or we want to add these categories, or move all these posts from this category into another category. Normally we would do this manually, or we would outsource this to another company that's good at doing lots of data entry manually. Um, but we can use WPCLI to do this. So this would be an email I'd get. Hi Ryan, I've attached a spreadsheet of a few tags we would like to import into our site before launch. If you could have these imported by the end of the day, that would be great. How many times do we get hit up by clients asking if we can have something done by the end of the day? And it's something that's seemingly really simple to them. They have a spreadsheet, they need that spreadsheet to now be on the site. So looking at the spreadsheet, I open it up and I scroll to the bottom and then I start to see how many records are in here. 2100. That's a lot of tags. The days before WPCLI, you're going into the spreadsheet and copying and pasting them one by one. Super fun. With WPCLI, we can write a really, really quick script to do this. WP import tags and then point to where the CSV is. In a matter of seconds, this is imported 2100 tags. The code for this is not complicated at all. So this is a custom command I wrote in about two minutes. Um, this is how you write custom commands in WPCLI, is with the add command method. And then the first parameter, you just say the name of the command of what you want it to be, and then the, uh, the callback for that command. 
This is about five lines of code that saved me four, five, six hours worth of time, of, or someone else's time. So I can just grab this CSV from, from the client and just do a mass import all at once. This is also great because it's a repeatable process. So if a month from now they say, hey, we have another 2,000 tags that we want to import into our site, this is not an issue. I have a command for this. I can run it, wait for it to finish, go get some coffee, and be done with it. So this, this is one of my favorites. Um, we used to have a workflow where we had a production site and we had a staging site. We would open up the staging site to the client once we went live with the client's site and we that would be the playground for them to go mess around and make changes on there before you make them in production. But this was an email that I was getting from some troublesome clients, I'll say, uh, on like a weekly basis. Hi Ryan, I was making a couple of small edits in the back end of our site today, and I think I got a little carried away. It no longer looks like the live site at all. Can you please reset it for me today? Thanks. At this point, I wanted to throw my computer in the garbage, because this had maybe been the third time this week I had gotten this email from a client. And without WPCLI, the process for doing this is pretty frustrating. You would start with reevaluating all of your life choices that had led up to this exact moment, um, and then you would try to remember the SSH information into the production server, finally get into the production server, you would take a DB export out of there, search and replace all of their URLs, um, and then remove any production-only data. This is a fun one. So if they're connecting to an external API to pull in data, or even worse, to push data out, if you are still connected to the production endpoint and you import this into your staging site, guess what? Your staging site data is now going to the production endpoint. Um, that was a lot of fun conversations with clients while when they were wondering why funny cat videos were making it into their HubSpot account. So you need to remove any production-only data, needless to say. And then, again, SSH into the staging server and import the database. Not a fun process for a nagging client. With WPCLI, this can be really easy. I wrote a small shell script to do this called WP Prod Sync, and it does exactly what I said it would do in the previous example, but automatically. So every time I got an email from this client, I would say, yeah, sure, I got this. And I'd run one command and it would be done. So digging into this a little bit, all I would do is find out what the production URL is, find out what the staging URL is, and then I would do a search and replace through the exported database, um, set a couple of weird My MySQL things to uh, fix some invalid date issues, uh, and then import the actual database. And then you could go through and remove any data that is production only that your heart desires. This is also a really nice feature of WPCLI, is local configuration files. So the configuration files that I was showing you earlier, the wp-cli.yaml files, normally live in the parent directory of where all of your projects may be, so a sites folder or something like that. Then WPCLI reads that file and can map out where everything is. But there's a lot of times that you may want, you know, some some random settings set for specific projects. And it gets really nice that you can set aliases for specific projects. So in this instance, I set a prod and a stage alias for just that site only. So when I'm in that working directory, I can run that script and it will just know where the production site is, where the staging site is, merge all of that information together and run the script for me. So that reduces the mental load of trying to remember where all of your client's sites are at any given moment, which can be extremely difficult to do. So I'm going to wrap things up here. We went through a lot of examples on why you should use WPCLI. Uh, you can control multiple installs from one place. It allows you to automate monotonous tasks that you do not want to be doing over and over again. It gives you an easy way to do bulk operations like deleting users. Freaking Todd. Um, also provides an easy way to touch some hard to control WordPress internals like transients 
or cron jobs, and it's consistent and repeatable. There's quite a few uh, helpful resources for digging in more here because a lot of what I talked about today was pretty high level and just examples of how to use WPCLI. But there are a lot of other nuances about implementation and further things that you can do that I didn't cover today. So your first stop should be WPCLI.org. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, also, if you want to kind of know more about the history of WPCLI and maybe interested in that, um, there's a lot of good information on there. Also, all of the commands that are shipped with WPCLI, as well as a bunch of examples, are on uh, the developer.wordpress.org site. Um, so you can search for, if you search for like WPCLI commands, it, it will come up. Um, or it's developer.wordpress.org slash CLI slash commands. Um, so, like I said before, the project is actually collaborated on in GitHub rather than track like core. Um, so github.com slash WPCLI is a great place to go for that. Also something that I didn't really touch on during my talk, but there are actually plugins for WPCLI like there are for WordPress. Um, they're called packages and they live within the package index on WPCLI.org. Also, if you already know some stuff about WPCLI and just want to learn some more advanced stuff, uh, Daniel Bachuber, who is one of the maintainers of WPCLI, wrote a really good blog post about like 10 tips and tricks to do advanced things that you might not know about. Um, I also wrote another talk called WPCLI A to Z, which is much more in depth than this talk. Um, it's also on my slides account, so if you want to know a little bit more about the inner workings and go a little crazy with WPCLI and get super, super nerdy, um, that's up on my slides account at uh, slides.com slash codeprokid. And that is all I have, and we can take questions now. There's a mic in the middle of the room if people want to go up there and ask questions so we have it for the recording. Um, so for WPCLI, um, do I need to like um, do do I need to use like SSH to in order to log into my WordPress sites, or in order to like control all of them? That is a fantastic question. So the question was, do I have to have SSH access to my remote WordPress sites to run commands on them? Um, yes and no. So for the full suite of WPCLI, yes you do. Um, there is also a package for WPCLI which is called like WPCLI RESTful, written by Daniel Bakuber. So if you install that package, you can actually do a lot of those actions over REST. So you don't actually need that sort of SSH access. You just need to be able to do an authenticated REST request to the remote site, and then you can do all of, all of that stuff. And the support for it is very good. It's probably like 90% of the stuff that you can do in WPCLI, you can do through it. That's awesome, because I spent, I lost a day this past week changing the passwords for all of my sites because um, one of my coworkers left the company. So yep. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. This, this resonated with me. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a thing that happens, right? Like, people leave companies and a lot of times people just like leave their user accounts there until a day comes where they really regret that. <laughs> Jerry, but <laughs> we, you have Todd's, I have Jerry's. Yep, yep. Well, sweet. If there are no more questions, I will be around the rest of the camp. You can come talk to me about WPCLI. Thanks, guys.